Ready to be scared again? Jesus, how did this channel turn into what Four Corners was before the Howard years? Three corners, four corners, but with swearing. Coming up tonight, you know what Filchin is. Did you look that up? Chat, hey. This one's about government surveillance. So basically, either watch this or go watch Minority Report, because it's the same thing, but I'm more entertaining than Tom Cruise. So sure, Tom Cruise does his own stunts, but come on, give me a chance. Hey! Can Tom Cruise do this? Hey, 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 oh. Now this will make you shit yourself like that bath scene in Shine. And when you do, I sincerely hope some old man comes along and says, Oh, you shit yourself, huh? Hey, 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 can your grandfather do this? That movie deserves more credit than it got. But listen to this. Australia would have to have the most psychotic surveillance laws of any developed nation. We're gonna go as deep as the deep state gets in this video. This goes back to Five Eyes stuff, so two eyes deeper than the fucking pyramid, and it's all because Australia doesn't have a charter of human rights. Queensland and Victoria do, because there's no difference between the two major parties, of course. Thank you for informing me of that stinky handjob 15. But it doesn't exist on a federal level. Why? Why is it that we live in a futuristic wonder age where you can purchase Rodney Rood on CD, but we don't have a charter of human rights? Well, bad example, because you know what I'd prefer over a bill outlining my civil liberties? Yeah, mum's bum. <laughs> Honestly though, I think the reason we don't have a bill of rights is because the US does have a bill of rights. Man, can you imagine how much people would hate you if you turned the US Bill of Rights into a paper hat? And no one can hurt me because my hat says I have a right to trial. Anyway, because it protects its citizens from being spied on, not really, deep state, it offers enough protection that something like data retention laws are impossible in the US. Remember those? Remember how we were all briefly obsessed with metadata and Scott Ludlam was like a political David Lee, unbelievably famous for like 30 seconds, Brief, it made the Pokemon Go trend look like the Spanish Inquisition's people state. And I will explain why data retention's scary in a minute, but this sort of sums it up perfectly. There are data retention laws in the UK, France and Belgium. Just recently though, the Court of Justice of the European Union ruled that they contravene EU law. Probably partly because Portugal said, No, I don't want them to know how many flat chickens I eat. And partly because those laws allowed for data retention so indiscriminate that they violated the EU's Charter of Human Rights. We don't have a charter, so it's like having no penis. What's there to violate? It was no problem at all to pass a law here storing all your information or a big supercomputer equivalent of canards, I suppose. At least I hope it was. I really hope it wasn't their arch nemesis Storage King. The slightly different parts of Storage King are unsettling to me. It's like when the boys visited Shelbyville. This place is starting to freak me out. After Australia passed these data retention laws, the next step, and this was all clearly thought out by smart, dark operators. The next step was to pass the Assistance and Access Act. This allows enforcement agencies to access the metadata forcefully retained by telecom companies under the Data Retention Act. So the upshot is, essentially our government built a library for spooks. Data retention was the library, assistance and access was the library card. Yeah, I'd like the time and date that Jacqueline sent a friend a text explaining how f***ing feels better on caps, please. Ah, uh, yes, a classic that one. Right up there with Dennis's 3am message to his drug dealer, Yo Spanion, are you up for playing tennis in the park? Uh, that was exquisite. As was Spanion's sequel, the uh, much underrated, What the f*** do you think, your dog? Now, and this is the smoking gun, the US more or less told us to amend the Assistance and Access Act so they could continue negotiations with us to pass another bill called the Telecommunications Legislation Amendment. It would allow our agencies to exchange digital information with each other and for, say, ASIO to access metadata held in the US under, and how appropriately scarily named is this, the Cloud Act, clarifying lawful overseas use of data. Isn't that f***ing terrifying? You thought they were referring to Kirby's Magical Adventurers Cloud Daru. Wouldn't it be great if we lived in a parallel universe where HBO's smash hit show was called Kirby Your Enthusiasm? Oi! I feel so nauseous. I'm not good at flying. The point is... He rides a star, not a f***ing cloud, you idiot. Oh, shut up. F***ing weeds. He rides a 
Yeah, okay. I'm so sick of like <laughs> net nerds like my editor <laughs> saying that. Here's something that'll piss you off. You ready? Mario's not Italian, he's Serbian, all right? And Hang on, is that Milosevic? No, no, I'm just a plumber from um, Sicily, why not? The point is, this is not conspiracy. To quote Alex Jones, that's on record. US intelligence agencies absolutely would have wanted us to pass all kinds of intrusive laws that store everything you do and give intelligence agencies unlimited access to that information so they can share it with the US because then technically, it's not America doing it, it's Australia, do you see? Do. You. She. Old grey mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. I mean, what more evidence do you need that ASIO and ACES are just local branches of the CIA that we pay for? And if you don't believe me, ask off Whitlam. Oh, what's that? You can't because he died of natural causes? At 98? Please, don't be so naive. No one's ever died of old age except Kennedy, who was so old that his head exploded. Now to clarify, and this is very important, I don't think you should blame the Australian government for passing these laws. It's like blaming your local council for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I don't think Shell Harbour Council's jurisdiction is bin night and hammering out copyright laws with Japan. Not that I don't think Mary Ann Shaliba, Mayor of Shell Harbour, wouldn't give it a red hot crack. So yeah, Labor voted for it. Epic. But so did the Libs. Cringe. But the real question is, how did Craig Kelly vote? The answer is he didn't. He probably mistook his ivermectin with ketamine and so he was k-holing in the parliamentary bathroom when the vote was on. Man, that man's freaking out. Just note this, Kelly converts. He was in the government for the same decade that they pushed through all of these spooky bills, so he doesn't give a f about freedom. He called the cops on me and in his YouTube spiels about free speech, he turns off the comments. Protect freedom of speech. So there you go. You can all complain about me insulting your huckster god in the comments that I leave open. But what I'm getting at here is, I don't blame Scott Morrison for this. I really don't think that Scott Morrison is in the position to refuse the will of US spy agencies when last time Gough Whitlam said, Ahoy hoy chaps, you know Pine Gap, is that the gap between Chris Pine's ass cheeks? No, 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 no one knows who he is. Yet. Anywho, can you use that base to spy on the people you said you'd use it to spy on? That'd be just shagadelic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, organize a coup. That happened! So I get it. I really do. I don't blame any prime minister or even US president for that matter. This is all of the stone stuff. I genuinely think this goes higher than the president. And I do accept that being the United States data ghetto is just the price you pay for living in paradise. And by paradise, I clearly mean surface paradise. Strategic ally. But having said all of that, giving you the lay of the land as leniently as I just did, do you really think giving powers like that to dickheads like Dutton and Porter is a good idea? They try to bankrupt people over tweets they don't like. What do you think they're gonna do with powers that allow them to hack into someone's computer and put child porn on it? They just passed that law. They can not only look at your data, they can delete and modify your information all without a judge's warrant. See our previous video on Identify and Disrupt. But just another point of clarification. Even if we're being generous, the legislation I'm talking about here only explains a fraction of the hundred anti-terror laws that have been passed since 9-11. Maybe 10% is deep state, the other 90% is reef state. F*** all of it passed under Labor governments. Usually when you're talking about the what-ifs of legislation, you'll get a bunch of fat smug neckbeards saying, that's what's known as a slippery slope argument, but it's not a slippery slope argument. It's as real as this slippery slope available at Aldi for a bargain price. In all likelihood, even the New South Wales police are exploiting these powers in their current active investigation against me. I mean, data retention laws are so vaguely written that cops can just ask telecom companies for whatever the f they want. They're probably using it for shit as trivial as this. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, Kish FM secret sound is an echidna walking over a Michael Jackson CD. How the f did you guess that? <laughs> Just a hunch, mate. Because as we know from experience, I really think anyone who sues at the drop of a hat shouldn't be anywhere near the levers of power that are that great in scope. It shows a deep flaw in character where you will use whatever is at your disposal to crush your enemies, which is why when people are smug about the point, hmm, anyone who says that they've got nothing to hide doesn't get what's at stake. What's at stake? The fact that I ordered a pussy flashlight. No. 
What's at stake has nothing to do with your personal information being exposed to unwanted eyes. You're not that interesting. And that's what's actually scary about accessing your metadata is precisely that you're not interesting. You're predictable. You use the net mostly for porn and watching America's hardest prison documentaries and thinking, Oh, that is hard. But what metadata exposes is your habits. And if they know your habits, they know how you're going to react. And if they know how you're going to react, they essentially control your mind. I used to think, oh yay, the mainstream press is dying. Who cares? That's old school. Now they can formulate propaganda that'll target you and you specifically, your specific hopes, your specific fears. If they have your metadata, they basically have that nightmare little digital you that is the storyline of pretty much every Black Mirror episode ever made. So I'll ask again, do you really trust people like Dutton and Porter with that? Anyway, like and subscribe, and if you're interested, check out Angus Murray's work at Queensland Council of Civil Liberties. They're doing exceptional work. Get yourself a key ring of John Barillaro's a penis at friendlygeordies.com just to remind yourself every day of what a cock he is. I'll see you next time. Could be right to start. <laughs> Please share and comment below. Comment. Old grey mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. And now, the crazy old man singers. Old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be.